Sir, so please start. Good morning, everybody. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. So, good morning. Uh, good morning. So, I am pleased to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Amit Kumar Singh. He is scientist and head of the division of animal model of tuberculosis, immunology. And the division at IPMR, National Journal Institute for Leprosy and Other Microbacterial Diseases. Dr. Amit Kumar Singh got his MBSC from Andhra Kanal, the Division of Animal Biotechnology, and PhD from Prestige Institute, Central Drug Research Institute, Lucknow. He is finally successful in his case and made cloning in Buffalo in India at Andhra Kanal. Later, he switched to human and veterinary health team with expertise in microbacterial diseases. Before joining the prestigious ICMR Jalama Institute, he served for two years in ICMR and got a technical training. We are thankful to Dr. Amit Singh to have with us to share his expertise oh, in microbacterial diseases. <laughs> I do not touch on a high biomedical and veterinary importance. So I invite Dr. Singh to share his expertise on microbacteria and do not touch on That's a bit clear. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Good morning to each and all. And I am very thankful to organizer, especially Birbal, sir, for giving me this opportunity to discuss more on microbacteria with our emerging veterinarians and professors who are teaching in veterinary colleges. So uh, thank you very well, sir. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. So uh, I think I, I will use both the language, English and Hindi both. So uh, we can discuss more and each and everyone can understand. So my today, uh, my topic is mycobacteria genetic pathogen a veterinary perspective and the picture that i have put here uh, i think many of us have seen sometime in their life those who are living in villages they especially might have uh, seen this uh, thing near around surrounding their uh, home so this is a very common uh, things that happen in India and other developing countries. So no boiled milk directly from teeth to mouth. So people, when I was young, people would say, you have to drink a lot of milk, you have to drink a lot of milk, you have to drink a lot of milk, you have to drink a lot of milk. So that concept uh, was there when uh, we were studying in our school days. So, so uh, many people are still living with that concept, and that concept have led to spread of genetic diseases, and mycobacteria is one of them. So I will discuss more uh, when uh, slowly I will take forward uh, to this journey. So, a news chapiti 2016 from Uttarakhand region. So, uh, so I can interact with uh, the participants also. Yes, yes, you can interact. Sorry, sir. You can interact. Okay. So, मतलब मैं जानना चाहता हूँ कि आप लोगों ने कभी देखा है टीवी का केस फील्ड में या अपने स्टडीज टाइम में? I think many of us seen, but. Uh, not able to understand and and as we India does, does not currently have so stringent policy so we normally neglect it but ye news chapiti 2016 mein ki Uttarakhand monkeys may have TV and uh, so it's an example of wildlife genosis 
और ये न्यूज आज भी उतनी ही रेलिवेंट है अभी रिसेंटली इन अगस्त 2023 दो सम मंकीज वर फाउंड डेड इन ब्रिंदावन रीजन सो द बॉडी वाज सेंट टू आईवीआरआई एंड इट वाज ऑटोप्स्ड एंड द ट्यूबर क्रोसिस वाज द फाउंड इन देयर लंग माइकोबैक्टीरिया मोस आइसोलेटेड सो we can see that still this zoonotic diseases are uh, circulating not only in cattle population but also in wildlife and primates are very much susceptible so when uh, we are talking of eliminating tuberculosis in 2025 and uh, we have this spill over it is very likely uh, unlikely that we will achieve this goal so i think most of us are aware of world zoonosis and it's a derived from greek word uh, which is break up of uh, mix of two words zoon which means animal and nosis which means illness so any uh, diseases which can be transmitted from vertebrate animals to human or from human to vertebrates animals is zoonotic diseases so from human to vert uh, vertebrates is Uh, animals is reverse zoonosis what normally we know as or anthropogenesis and uh, it about uh, estimates are there that more than 60% of human uh, pathogens are zoonotic in origin so uh, today whole world is saying about one health so whole one health concept has arise from these findings only that uh, how animals are contributing to human diseases and if you, uh, we have to attain the millennium goal of disease free world so we have to work on animal health also and uh, that can be possible under the umbrella of one health zoonotic uh, disease tb in form of tb in humans which is mostly caused by m bovis but recent studies have uh why bovis who and oi says oi says that m bovis is a uh, main genotic pathogens but in recent years many other family of mycobacteria has been identified uh, to be cause uh, which causes a genotic tb so um, so many new literatures have emerged that m bovis is just a proxy and we are not aware of many other mycobacteria which can cause zoonotic diseases so uh, the another uh, significant finding of zoonotic tb is that uh, most of the uh, bacteria affect the uh, uh, sites other than the lungs and that is extra pulmonary tb so what mtb we normally get in human is uh, resides in lungs and causes pulmonary tb and treatment we all know that treatment of extra pulmonary tb is very difficult uh we also know that back mycobacteria is slow growing and a longer incubation period it's as if fast obligate intracellular pathogens so in the recent years the many new findings and information have been added in public domain and so many bacteria mycobacteria families uh, have shown have been identified to have a genotic importance m tuberculosis we all know so uh, m tuberculosis which uh, normally considered to be human pathogens have been identified from cattle also from monkey also m origis uh, is another pathogen which uh, have been recently identified from cattle in india and humans also in india so i will discuss more m africanum m bovis m capre and m mirkoti all these mycobacteria have genetic uh, importance so most of the bacteria belong to mtbc complex mycobacterium tuberculosis complex so normally when we look for the host the normal host for m tuberculosis is human but all other uh, animals can be vertebrate animals can be the accidental host like cattle and it is when cattle get infected with m tuberculosis we say it is an example of reverse zoonosis Similarly, M bovis 
Turtle is the normal host for, but uh, it has been isolated from humans also. M. origis, turtle is a normal host, but isolated from humans also. So if we look at the burden of tuberculosis across the world, so in 2022, around 10.6 million new human cases were uh, estimated to have been identified and 1.6 million deaths were attributed to be caused by tuberculosis. And though uh, data for genotic TV is uh, not uh, available, uh, a 2019 estimate uh, says that there were nearly 140,000 new cases and 11,400 uh, deaths due to genotic TB. So, uh, if you look at the look at the prevalence of genotic TB among all TB cases, the uh, if you take the data of whole world, the 1.4 percent of all TB cases in the world uh, is uh, let, or is to be caused by genotic TB. And if you look at the data of only developing countries, 10% uh, of uh, cases are caused by, um, are estimated to be caused by uh, genotic TB. So uh, the true burden of uh, genotic TB is, um, that is underestimated because we actually, we have, we do not focus on differentiation and identification of species uh, across the world on only in developed countries and they go for this genome sequencing and identification of sequence and identify species up to genomic level so uh, when we look at the burden of uh, india in for bovine tuberculosis so we all know that india has the largest cattle population and also have highest human tb cases globally so uh, this shows uh, we are uh, we do have a highest burden of genotic TB also, and uh, estimates uh, are sh uh, shows that around 7.3 percent of uh, bovine tuberculosis burden is from uh, India, and this number is expected to rise in the coming year because we are now moving toward the strong intensification of dairy industry and uh, uh, greater emphasis on increasing productivity so uh, some genetic studies have shown that this productivity is inversely correlated with disease susceptibility to mycobacteria so uh, um, it can be uh, assumed that in near future we will have more burden of bovine tuberculosis in india so there are many predisposing factors. So uh, we are moving toward mixed farming, large herds, and uh, uh, young animals are more susceptible than older ones. Low nutrition and lower level of uh, tra uh, trace minerals like selenium, high copper, they are all in associated with increased risk of uh, bovine TB. And uh, while purchasing animals, farmers are not looking about their health status. So we many times the TV we purchase animals which have uh, TB in their latent phase, and once introduced in the heart, it infect us other animals also. And uh, farmers and other dairy uh, owners are not uh, paying. Uh, enough attention for housing of these animals. So uh, they are animals where they are kept are uh, ill ventilated, not proper sun light is there, dark, damp dwellings are, and these all conditions promote survival of mycobacteria. Uh, we will see later how uh, it does uh, support. And also, uh, we know that uh, because of uh, more pressure to meet food security, we are uh, rearing these exotic cattle more and more, and they are more susceptible to these uh, infections. While Jagu cattle, which are advantageous cattle, are somewhat more resistant than these exotic or cross So, when we look at the transmission of genotic tuberculosis, 
so uh, humans are giving infection to animals uh, our domestic cattle or these domestic cattle if share uh, these uh, uh, grazing areas with wildlife so they are transferring their infection to wildlife also and vice versa and from animals to humans so this cycle is going on not only in india but in other parts of worlds also so if you look at the tb transmission between animals so uh, animals can become infected through inhalation as we all know it like in human or ingestion or direct contact by mucous membrane or breaks in the scales so for cattle they are normally infected through aerosols through during close contacts and in inter, uh, intensified dairying raining systems so it is uh, very well uh, known cause of disease spread within the herd ingestions is believed to be most common route in ferrets cats deer and horses and percutaneous transmission or break in the skin are mainly seen in species species which are prone to hunting or fighting such as cats and badgers uh if you look at the transmission of genotic tb ingestion is the most uh common route and uh, as in the first picture that i have shown the consumption of milk and other dairy products which are non pasteurized uh, they are most uh, likely source of infection for humans and uh, less commonly but cases have been reported through the consumption of raw or improperly cooked contaminate, contaminated meat inhalation of aerosols so uh, if cattle infected they will uh, uh, generate aerosols of in infected mycobacteria which if inhaled by humans they can they are at uh, risk of getting the disease or direct contact with broken skin so well, this is the examples and uh, that we discussed earlier uh, it has been shown by pictures so uh, as i told earlier that am bovis is just an proxy and uh, many other uh, bacteria mycobacteria which belong to mtbc complex are also responsible for causing genotic tb and am capre is uh, one of them we all know that am capre so that mycobacteria which is isolated from goat which is present in goat but uh, am capre is actually a descendant from am bovis and am bovis Uh, is resistant to parasitic mite while am capre is sensitive to parasitic mite and uh, so far we have not identified any case of am capre in humans but this is not because uh, it is not present in human in india because we do not pay attention on differentiation of species while diagnosis so uh, we just check okay mycobacteria is present go for tb treatment but which mycobacteria is present we do not actually bother because of patient load uh so lack of specialized diagnostic laboratories no genomic monitoring is there no uh and uh, clinical differentiation is almost impossible so both causes a similar type of tb and whatever we see by chest x ray or acid first staining we just look okay these are the tb symptoms this is mycobacteria but which one we never uh, go beyond go for that and uh, extra pulmonary tb is most often caused by this uh, genotic tb pathogens so again diagnosis of extra pulmonary tb is very difficult and bacteria is, most of the time is not demonstrated in these patients so uh, in european countries which have very low burden of mycobacteria so mm, they have reported a 0.3% prevalence of this m capre in their in human patients but in india so far no data and it is not because tb is and capre is not present but because we do not uh, identify at genomic level so recently m origins have been reported from india first in 2019 and uh, human cases uh, reported from new zealand australia usa uk 
and the cases the first case was reported from new zealand and that too was indian worker who was working in the dairy farm in the new zealand so india have uh, connections of this spread of this disease to other part of the world also so again it is very difficult to differentiate m origins from m tuberculosis by traditional approaches and m origins again causes the extra pulmonary manifestation and we are seeing a rise in this extra pulmonary disease so many patients bone tb and other form of tb uh, gastrointestinal tb we are seeing increased number of cases and we, uh, we just see okay mycobacterium present so same line of treatment we do not go for this differentiation So when uh, I told earlier that uh, these poor ventilation, damp environment supports mycobacterium survival because survival of mycobacterium is influenced by temperature, low temperature promotes survival, humidity, sunlight exposure, moisture and temperature fluctuations. And, and if in damp conditions, they can persist for several months in soils and other materials like feed, feces, and uh, presence of direct sunlight, higher temperature, and dry environment can lead to its rapid disappearance. So, as a veterinarian, uh, when we go in field, if we see such conditions, we should try to educate uh, our farmers and uh, dairy owners to look after all these things because once this disease get into their heart it, it is very difficult to eliminate from there and as we do not have culling policy in india so uh, it's uh, they can also get the infection because we can segregate the animal keep it separately but even then animal is uh, living and shedding the bacteria but this uh, survival in the environments uh, confounds the control program uh, and uh, we are uh, it is with these uh, survivals we are uh, unlikely to achieve the millennium goal that our prime ministers have envisaged for India. So uh, this uh, survival can lead to disease transmission and uh, and uh, experiments have shown that if you are uh, giving this infected feet or feces to in experimental animals, they also got the disease. So uh, we, it has already been established that that infect uh, animals can spread uh, can contaminate the environment, which can lead to disease spread. So mycobacterium is uh, resistant to many of uh, disinfectant, but uh, like phenol waste and disinfectant povidine, iodine, hypochlorite, they uh, form glutaraldehyde, formaldehyde, and they can be effectively destroyed by pasteurization. We all know that, and we should advocate farmers to go for uh, pasteurization of milk, exposure to UV light for the utensils they are using, or uh, autoclaving of so uh, we all know that when we go in field or we see cases in our clinics so clinical signs that lead to suspicion or weakness loss of appetite and weight fluctuating fevers uh, low grade pneumonia diarrhea and enlarged prominent lymph node so uh, in veterinary, uh, the diagnosis of tuberculosis resolve around detecting the positive organisms by culture or molecular test, which is the gold standard actually, and the cellular immune responses to these organisms. So in field, we normally go first for this cellular immune response test for like uh, TST uh, and diagnostic uh, test that, that can be used are cultural or molecular techniques. But challenges with diagnostic tests are there. They are uh, mycobacteria have very slow growth, have cross reactivity, and species identification is very difficult by routine laboratory tests. So, cellular, uh, we all know intradermal tuberculin test or IGRA test. 
so uh, in field normally we go for this intradermal tuberculin test and it is the most commonly used diagnostic test where purified protein derivatives are injected intradermally into the uh, cervical region or caudal region of tail so the principal is delayed type hypersensitivity and uh, intradermal test is of two types the single intradermal test in which uh, purified protein derivative of ambovis is used while comparative intradermal tuberculin test in which both bovine and avian ppd are injected so both bovine and avian ppd are injected to differentiate the positive reactors because of environmental mycobacterium infection so it will uh, truly help to differentiate whether uh, the uh, it is not an false positive uh, reactor so uh, when we are using uh, comparative intradermal will test we look for swelling and there should be minimum 2 m more than 2 mm of uh, swelling difference between um, bo uh, between bovine and avian ppd injection site if you are going for single intradermal test the uh, if swelling is more than 4 mm that is a positive uh, reactor while uh, less than 3 mm is considered a negative and between 3 and 4 mm is suspicious and we have to repeat a test again after one month but tst has very poor sensitivity and different uh, researchers workers have shown um, this uh, variability from 55 to 99 percent so uh, this tuberculin test has evaluated in other animals also, but in sheep, uh, if it is uh, of very limited value because and it is false. Normally, it is false negative because uh, and it animals become positive only when they have extensive lesions. Uh, so uh, uh, in order to in enhance the sensitivity of intradermal test, these days now we are routinely combining this tst test with igra assays so igra assays is interferon gamma release assay in which uh, blood cells are activated with ppd and now many country many companies have come with uh, an refined igra where they are using mtb antigens p10 ez6 for stimulation of this uh, uh, lymphocytes monocytes and looking for ifn release so this release assay measure the cell mediated immune responses and uh, advantages of igra is that it is more sensitive faster and requiring one form visit while in tst we have to make two visits first at the time of injection then 72 hours later to measure the thickness and uh, Igra is, is more sensitive and we can detect the infection at the early stages compared to TST. So that infection, uh, even at infection of 14 days can be detected with Igra, while for a uh, TST test, it requires, no, it can be detected, animal is positive only after three to six weeks. But uh, when we are using uh, Igra asset uh, along with TST, blood samples to be collected prior to TST. Otherwise, uh, IGRA will give false positive results, and uh, and and if uh, by mistake we have done TST, then we have to wait for at least a month to perform IGRA assay because TST cells stimulates our uh, this defense cells, lymphocytes, macrophages, and they give false positive, and IGRA is done immediately after TST. And IGRA is a uh, preferred test when animals are difficult to capture or handle. So as it requires only one visit, uh, one time capture, we have to rely on this. So serological tests, though not prefer for uh, TB diagnostics, uh, but in veterinary, uh, it has some values because IGRA is very costly and need specialized labs. And and at later stages of disease, suppose many times farmer uh, come late to us and report that animals are having such and such system and we go for TST and IGRA and uh, animals are showing negative results, which is quite possible when uh, animal at 
late stage of disease and double develops energy so at that time eliza is the preferred test and wish um, when we have a strong suspicion for tb we uh, and uh, based on the symptoms told by pharma uh, if uh, symptoms uh, have um, that is a long time back uh, the animals are suffering from long time we should go for eliza so uh, it has it is cost effective and it has greater ability to detect energy animals energetic animals we all know that animals uh, which uh, shows uh, because of poor body conditions show less immune responses and therefore they are false negative culture we all know is gold standard and uh, if you can demonstrate the mycobacteria in samples uh, that is for sure that animals is tb positive but again drawback is that bacteria is a very slow grower and uh, for differentiation of species different type of media is needed like am bovis need media which are supplemented with pyruvate while am tb and am avm grow well on glycerol containing media so we all know that in field condition where we have too many too much patient load Uh, it is very difficult to go for such differentiation. That's why you are actually losing, um, missing the data of true burden of genetic diseases. With the molecular techniques are now taking over, and PCR is one of the most widely used techniques uh, technique for the diagnosis of bovine TB and help in rapid diagnosis and can. Help in differentiation between members, but again, uh, limitation with PCR is that it is limited to uh, post-mortem diagnosis, and isolation of DNA uh, from mycobacteria is a very complex process. Many times, because of poor isolation procedure, uh, we miss the lose the dna and uh, presence of inhibitors pcr is negative and false negative reports are given which uh, which is not correct and we all know that um, for live animal it is not possible because bacteremia is rare in cattle so if we collect blood and we do pcr and we say uh, the animals are negative and that is actually not correct procedure so uh, we are facing a lot of diagnostic challenges at animal human interface as i told earlier am tuberculosis normally causes pulmonary infection while am bovis lead to extra pulmonary diseases and uh, Clinically, there we cannot differentiate between the infection caused by M. bovis and M. tuberculosis, and even smear microscopy cannot differentiate between the type of bacteria. So this lead to treatment challenge that because M. bovis resistant to paragenamide, and uh, if we do not go for this differentiation, we are adding paragenamide to therapy, and, and it is uh, actually causing suffering to the patient so if you look at the history of genotic tb in india in 1917 the first case of bovine tb was diagnosed in india and in uh, the and in 2005 a study from aims reported the prevalence of am bovis and tuberculosis in both human and cattle samples miss actually it was a missed infection and 8.7% of human samples are both am bovis and tuberculosis while 35.7% of cattle samples were positive for am tuberculosis also so uh, when we say uh, so cattle is equally susceptible to uh, am tuberculosis infection like human and uh, uh, farmers are not paying attention to their health and uh, they report late for their symptoms to the clinics and in the meantime they spread the infection to the cattle that they are handling with and this cycle of transmission continues so 
Uh, in 2017, study by Bapat et al. showed the presence of humbubes in human, especially in those populations who consumed raw meat and raw milk. So, uh, and in 2017, a study in Tamil Nadu showed MTV prevalence in the bovine TV samples. So the study uh, in 2005 and 2017 are almost similar where they are, uh, we are seeing a lot of tuberculosis infection among cattle. And is cross-sectional studies in 2019 identified cattle handlers and cattle uh, infected with tuberculosis and all sharing same M tuberculosis strain, which was identified after genomic sequencing. So uh, studies showed highlighted that uh, these infections were transferred by cattle handlers to these cattle and uh, lead to the transmission between the cattle also. So M origins was first reported from cattle in 2019 in India. And in humans also, the CMC Bello reported the isolation of M origins strain in 2019. So we uh, now have to move toward one health approach if we really want to control this tuberculosis transmission in India. And uh, at present, now government of India is paying a lot of attention toward one health approach and AMR approach. And uh, the coordinations committee have been uh, formed to where uh, we are looking the health of both animals and humans uh, equally and in one health perspectives. And uh, now there is increased collaborations among veterinary, clinical, and public health sectors. So uh, one health approach uh, requires a lot of uh, communication between different sectors, society, and uh, we need a capacity building also to tackle this transmission and coordination. So, uh, genotic TB treatment and management involve screening of uh, patients, presented TB, and treatment. Oh, we all know that MOVs is resistant to paragenomide. So, once MOVs is identified, we have to initiate the treatment without uh, paragenomide. So uh, my recommendations to for one health approach to reduce the burden of bovine TB in India is to reduce uh, level of disease in reservoirs. For that, we have to identify the cattle uh, reservoirs, and we have to segregate them or cull them if possible. And we have to break this cycle of transmission. Because only breaking the cycle of transmission can reduce the burden of TB and we can eliminate TB after some time. And for this, veterinarians have to play a great role and have to raise awareness among animal handlers. And additionally, we have to also develop human resources also, which, uh, which, can, which can train these animal handlers and dairy owners about this. And we should also implement anti-mortem and post-mortem diagnosis of bovine TB in cattle. Posturization should be made mandatory and contact tracing of infected animals should be conducted at regular intervals. And we additionally, we have to overcome diagnostic challenges and we have to establish good labs uh, at different parts so which can help in this diagnostic identification. Uh, which provided diagnostic supports and easy ident uh, identification of positive organisms. So, culling of infected animal is ideal procedure, but in India, not possible. So, we have to go for segregation. We have to implement biosecurity measures, and the animal handler should regularly go for health checkup and. Uh, Animals have to be screened regularly, and 
we have we need to introduce this contact tracing. So if any herd is found found positive, we should look for all the persons who have come contact uh, with these infected animals, and this will help to curb the transmission cycle. And though not uh, available today, as a researcher, we should uh, look for development of effective vaccines for mycobacteria and animals. So we all know prevention involves good hygiene and management, sanitation, good ventilation, tail-to-tail -tail arrangement of keeping animals, proper and hygienic disposal of waste, isolation of sick and weak animals, and tuberculosis testing at regular interval. Normally, ideal interval is three months. Test and slaughter policy, other than cows. Uh, if possible, veterinarian, those are employed at slaughterhouse, uh, they sh should look for symptoms in the slaughtered animals. And if positive, that meat should be discarded. And chemotherapy and vaccination, though not possible in today's scenario, but we have to think now because animals are very costly. And because of these costs, farmers are hiding these positive cases from society. So uh, as a researcher, one should look for development of uh, new chemotherapy agents and vaccines for preventing diseases in animals. So in India, a lot of uh, problems for TV controls. And we all know reactors does not have any visible listen. No, we have a trace back mechanisms. We uh, unorganized sectors are basically running these dairy farms, poverty, literacy, and many. So veterinarians play a, can play a great role in genetic TB prevention. They can educate the animal owners and uh, promote hygiene practices to mitigate genetic risk. So the future of genetic microbacterial control lies in advancing veterinary education like this winter school is doing enhancing diagnostic capabilities that government have to focus and to foster interdisciplinary partnership for a holistic approach. Uh, recently, so new like swab test for you know, TV diagnosis in monkey has been developed in USA. So these type of innovations we really require it in our country also. So uh, with this, my concluding remarks, we all know the microbacteria present a formidable genetic challenges and we need a holistic approach that is one health approach and we need a high tent awareness, surveillance and stringent control measures to spread the disease uh, spread and uh, synergy between veterinary and medical professionals is required and increased uh, research should be promoted to shield bold wildlife and human health from the tuberculosis. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Now, I will just part of to interact with the different or religious series Is there any query from any other part of them? Participants, if you have any questions, please ask the sir. Okay. So, uh, so one person, Dr. Ramakarthi, is asking that what is the management of table process in Provide? 